Hello, so I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Nadia Sal, who's just released a report looking at a diverse range of skin analysis technologies. Nadia, tell us first, what are the types of devices that are already on the market that serve the sector? Sure, um, so there are a range of devices on the market today for uh, cosmetic analysis. There is a whole world of uh, devices used in research and development. And um, these devices have been around since the late 1980s. What they do is provide very accurate, uh, very precise data um, to give reproducible results for a lot of experiments and claims that companies need to make. So um, these have been commercialized for quite a while. Um, and more recently, we have seen um, these uh, skin analysis devices trickle into the retail sector. So on the slide, we have a few um, that, you, that someone may see uh, when they visit uh, a retailer, such as Sephora, or if they go to a high-end spa. So quite a few of these have been uh, on the market um, for maybe the past five to 10 years as well. And, and I'm um, already thinking Am I right in thinking, though, that historically these have not been bought by consumers? Um, they've more been used in salons or in healthcare environments, but it's not until recently been a consumer product to buy these sorts of devices? Yes, exactly. So most of these devices are, uh, the companies sell them on a B2B basis um, to uh, schools, hospitals, um, or uh, spas, salons, as you mentioned. Um, and what's emerging is now um, companies that are selling skin analysis devices directly to the consumer. Right. So what are some of the new devices which have been used and um, what, what are the key trends that you found in this market? Sure. So um, the, a few years ago, um, companies started to sell uh, small handheld devices to monitor skin hydration. So you can buy these for um, quite low cost from uh, Amazon, for example. But what's really emerging are companies selling uh, smart mirrors. So these are essentially tablets that have been uh, configured in a way to serve uh, as a mirror and uh, to show, uh, to really work into the daily flow of someone's life, um, perhaps in the morning, uh, while they're getting ready for the day, they will see uh, the cues, the weather, um, and as well as uh, you know, they're going over their skincare regimen um, and, and makeup as well. So I think on the next slide, you've got um, a list of some of the different trends that you're seeing. Um, can you talk us through those? Uh, we see that a big one is that people are using their consumer devices more and more. What's the status of commercialization of those products? Yeah, certainly. So um, the key trend is that skin analysis is moving into the home. So going into that direct to consumer um, model, uh, a lot of this is um, to increase e-commerce. So uh, for example, 10% of cosmetic sales are online. Um, so companies are developing uh, software apps to uh, work with phones um, that allows for skin analysis to take um, to be done remotely. And that helps to increase basket sizes as well as to um, increase conversion rates. Um, so uh, there are other devices that uh, work to increase customer interaction and brand loyalty. So uh, a person interacting daily with a um, app that's branded would receive a direct marketing, for example. And of course, there's some uh, contribution from the quantified self movement. So for example, the um, smart mirror that I showed on the previous slide, that falls under this category for someone who's interested in those devices are on the market today. Um, in terms of apps, there's quite uh, certainly quite a few on the market um, and you can find them readily through uh, either the branded websites or uh, through some of the major retailers like Walmart. Is anyone taking a leading role in this space yet? From what you said, it sounds like um, you know there's many different approaches for different business reasons. People are looking at this market. Um, do you see any winners emerge, or is it all to play for at the moment? There is certainly um, 
uh, in certain markets, there's a clear leader. So, for example, uh, L'Oreal um, have taken AI skin analysis in-house, and uh, this is now deployed throughout their different brands. Um, there are other uh, smaller uh, niche players out there who are uh, in the space. So, for example, um, Perfect Corp, who uh, have developed a range of AR applications for try on, uh, trying on makeup remotely. Um, they've also got quite a foothold uh, in, in AI uh, for skin analysis. In terms of companies that are developing hardware, that's uh, certainly up for play uh, at the moment. And what is the technology innovation behind this? And what is it that people can patent to win in this market? Is it on the hardware side or, you know, many companies mention AI. Is there a lot of value in the AI or is it just a, a marketing word they're using to help sell a product? Sure. So for apps, uh, it's definitely the AI um, that is driving and, and uh, the image recognition, going people going through the data. Um, labeling the data. Um, so that's um, that's the barrier uh, of entry for, for AI apps. In terms of hardware, um, I think, you know, companies need to develop a, a clever strategy to um, entice people to buy the product, um, whether that's a really a killer application. Um, so for example, a uh, device that only applies concealer exactly on the spot, um, on the dark spot. Um, but in general, I think, um, you know, companies selling hardware will find it, um, will find consumers a bit more reticent if there's not the ecosystem already developed. Very interesting. Nadia, thank you very much. And for more information, take a look at this report from Dr. Nadia Sal entitled Skin Analysis Technologies on the idtechx.com website. Thank you. Thanks, Raghu.